Thank you. Yeah, the, the work is called electron energy loss spectroscopy, yields and cathodoluminescence, yield for particles inside substrate. Um, um, first of all, I always in, uh, give a brief introduction of what ILS and CL is. Uh, it's uh, experimental techniques performed in an electron microscope when you put a nanoparticle or something in an electron microscope and shoot relativistic electrons at it. The electrons lose energy and measuring their final energy and knowing their initial energy, we can calculate the energy loss. This is why it's called electron energy loss spectroscopy. While uh, the particle is um, uh, is shot with relativistic electrons, it gets excited and starts emitting light. Uh, so this light is collected and its intensity is measured. That's uh, called cathode luminescence. Uh, this is an example of how ILS spectrum does look like, or CL spectrum, uh, but this is an ILS spectrum for a silver nanoprism. Um, it has the ILS and CL have great spatial and energy re resolution. That's why they are used over optical methods. So if you shoot your electrons at the corner of the prism, you get the plasmon peak at this 2.2 electron volts energy. And if you shoot your electrons at the center of the prism, you get uh, these and this plasmon peak. And um, so you can um visualize the position of the plasmon peak on the cross section of the particle with the spatial resolution of less than one nanometer which is not possible with optical methods so with so for this 2.2 electron volts peak you can locate that this is positioned at the corners of the prism the problem <clears throat> that we discuss in this work is in actual experiments the particle is never surrounded with only vacuum it's always placed on a substrate or inside the substrate um, and the substrate is known to affect the ILS and CL spectra. Uh, the substrate shifts plasmon resonances to lower energies. So the work is actually devoted to simulating the ILS and CL for particles uh, right now inside substrate. And we use the discrete dipole approximation for this. The discrete dipole approximation is based on the volume integral equation. Here it is. Um, uh, it's um, basically Maxwell's equations uh, reformulated as one single integral equation. Uh, and uh, this in e equation includes the Green tensor for free space, infinite free space, which we will use for, us, for particles inside substrate, looks like this. Um, and the DDA is based on discretizing the particle's volume. So if you have your particle of arbitrary shape and arbitra arbitrary internal structure, you discretize the volume into a fin finite set of elementary volumes. Then each volume is replaced with the point dipole, which uh, reflects the refractive index of uh, an elementary volume that it replaced. And then you get this finite system of linear equations. And basically every DDA code that you can find solves this system of linear equations and calculates the polarization of each elementary volume. Uh, this is how the DDA works. But when we started uh, investigating how to simulate ILS and CL with the DDA, we came to the fact that uh, the free space energy losses are known uh, free space energy losses are uh, for uh, free space when there is no particle present. Uh, so you can calculate free space energy losses of an electron, but you want the particle induced energy losses and you want to simulate any particle, any shape, any internal structure. And it turns out that there is only a theory for particles inside vacuum, which is never true in experiments. And there is no theory for particles inside any host medium. Uh, I'm not even talking about uh, near, near substrates. I'm talking about in, in, in infinite host medium. So... Uh, the DDA uh, is good for, for calculating these quantities over the volume of the particle because the volume is discretized. The quantities are absorption power, extinction power, and scattering power. But for electron, we want the free space energy losses and enhanced energy losses. Enhanced are particle-induced energy losses. Uh, by knowing the enhanced energy losses, we can we could calculate the ILS and CL probability and compare them to the experimental ones. So we started deriving the theory from scratch for the case of electron moving in an arbitrary host medium. 
This is the incident field of an electron moving in a host medium. The host medium's uh, refractive index is hidden here in the green stanzer. Um, and if you calculate this integral, you can uh, get this set of uh, you, you can get you can obtain this result, which is uh, actually known. Uh, this is an incident field of an electron moving in an infinite medium. Uh, uh, this is the refractive index of the medium. Here it is again, and uh, it turns out later that the infinite host medium approximation is good enough for particles inside substrate. Uh, so as I said, DDA is suitable for calculating. Uh, quantities over the volume of the particle because it is discretized the volume of, of the particle is discretized so for extinction the the quantity is calculated as an integral over the volume of the particle uh, of uh, an incident electron field we know it by multiplied by polarization of the particle polarization is calculated in the dda code but as i said for for an electron we want the particle induced energy losses which is an integral over the volume of the source uh, of a uh, scattered field from the particle multiplied by the current density uh, conjugated and uh, we don't know the scattered field we can't uh, actually integrate over the volume of the particle uh, of the over the volume of an electron because it's an infinite line um, but if we rewrite the scattered field as an integral over the volume of the particle, it's by definition the green stands are multiplied by the polarization of the particle over the volume of the particle, and we get this double integral, then we can uh, change the order of the integration in it and introduce the E1, which is this integral over the volume of the source of green stands are multiplied by current density of an electron conjugated, which is uh, basically the same integral as this except the current density is conjugated and if we again calculate this integral it turns out that the final result is easily um, uh, uh, can be obtained from the incident field of an electron slightly modified and we know the incident field of an electron here it is it's known from the literature we rederived it again and so therefore we know the e1 uh, the, the polarization P of the particle is calculated in the DDA code, and the integral, as you can see, is now is over the volume of the particle, which is discretized. So we can calculate the particle-induced energy losses. Um, therefore, we can calculate uh, the yields and CL probability for particles inside arbitrary host medium, uh, even absorbing one, or even in the case of Cherenkov radiation. Um, for particles inside uh vacuum we have the lorentz me theory so we can compare the result for our general formula and as you can see the dashed and dotted lines are the lorentz me theory are pretty uh agreeable with the simulated ones for a silver nanosphere uh, the blue line is eels and the pink line is is cl but we want as a, uh, I mentioned, the substrate. So how the substrate does affect the spectrum. This blue line is the particle inside vacuum, and uh, this magenta line is for the same particle inside glass with the refractive index of 1.5. And this red line is for the particle inside the medium with the refractive index 2, which uh, is the Cherenkov radiation case already because the speed of an electron is faster than the speed of light in this medium. This is how the plasmon peaks are shifted when the medium is present around the particle. Uh, but let's compare the theory and the simulation based on the theory to the experiments. This is an experiment by Raza et al. from 2015 for silver nanospheres placed inside silicon nitride. Uh, and electrons had the energy of one 120 kilo electron volts, which is 0.59 C, uh, faster than the speed of light in silicon nitride. So the Cherenkov radiation is present. And for, uh, for example, for this uh, silver sphere of this radius and this uh, distance from the center of the sphere, you have this experimental results, which is dots. The, the dots are the experimental results. And the red line is the simulation uh, is which is done with the new general theory. Uh, no problems accounting for Cherenkov radiation. The plasmon peak is uh, 
in agreement with the experimental one. Um, and this is another experiment for a gold nanorod from 2018 by Kobilko et al. The gold nanorod in, is placed inside glass substrate, silicon oxide. Uh, uh, the speed of electrons is less than the speed of light, not, not so not so complex case, the size is this. And this is the uh, yield spectrum averaged over the cross section of the nanorod. And these are four plasmon maps for four plasmon peaks de de derived by the authors in the experiment. So we simulated the same nanorod as a perfect cylinder with hemispheres at both ends uh, and got the uh, the ill spectrum averaged over the cross section of the nanorod and visualized the plasmon peaks for uh, the same four plasmon uh, peaks that were obtained in the experiment. And we can see that four simulated plasmon peaks are uh, in visible agreement with the experimental plasmon peaks, uh, I mean, plasmon maps. Uh, which is also great. So the general theory seems to be working for both non-Cherenkov and Cherenkov medium. Uh, and for particles inside substrate, it is suitable for comparing with actual experiments. So for the conclusion, uh, we derived the theory for ILS and CL for particles inside substrate. It's an infinite host medium approximation. We implemented it into open source software ADDA, got the, got the agreement to the Lawrence Mead theory and to experiments, developed the Python library for automatizations and producing nice pictures, which I've shown. Those are the results of uh, a Python library. So you don't have to work too much with the data, with raw data. It is available at this link. It, it is forked from the original uh, open source uh, ADDA link but it will be included in the upcoming official new release of ADA. We expect it to come out at the end of this year, but the source code is proved to be working as you see and is available by this link. And we're currently working on the theory for simulating ILS and CL for particles near semi-infinite substrate. When the particle is placed on uh, a semi-infinite substrate, uh, we will, we expect some problem with eels because electrons can't penetrate uh, long distances. But uh, for CL, we expect uh, this to be very suitable for simulating actual experiments. Um, but for now, uh, thank you. And I'm open to questions. Thank you, Alexander, for the very interesting talk. Again, I wrote a question, but if any, anyone else, else has a question, so please raise your hand. Give you the permission to talk. Yeah, so uh, maybe I'll uh, I'll ask the question. Um, so it's kind of technical. So do you need to use the green function of, of the of free space or uniform medium, or do you need to specify the green function that includes the particle already? No, we use the free space greens function okay. and the add the DDA code uh, already has it, yeah. it contains it so it can calculate it on like on the fly. Um, I, I mean, the greens function on the fly is yeah. calculated, but this system of linear equations uh, takes some time to calculate. Yeah, so through the polarizability or polarization of the particle, you get, let's say, the... Uh, the yields and CL probability. Yeah, there is a CL probability, but the modified green function emerges from the, the polarization of, of, the, of the particle. Um, we have the free space greens function for uh, to calculate the field, but then the greens functions help calculate the polariz polarization. This is the free space greens function. So when we know the polarization, we know uh, the field because they are proportional. Yeah. And we, don't, we don't need the Green's function in the presence of the particle. Yeah, this. okay, that's very nice. Okay, that simplifies the yeah. picture. Okay, uh, so again, thank you, Alexander. Thank uh, you. Oh, we have, a, okay, so we have another question in the chat, but maybe in the interest of time, you can answer it in the chat. Yeah, I can answer it in the chat, thank you. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's move to the next speaker.